is uh, Nana Verhoof. Uh, she's an associate professor in comparative media studies uh, at the Utrecht University. And she's also a researcher uh, within the project Charting the Digital on Digital Cartography. Uh, in this presentation, she will propose a perspective on interactive and locative-based urban projects. And yeah, there's a key phrase I'd say that I really like in uh, the summary of her presentation is navigation as a cultural form. So we'll see what it's all about. Uh, sorry, as a, as a cultural navigation as a, as a cultural form. Ah, okay. Yeah, I'll give right. it some more emphasis then, if you like that. <laughs> yeah, I think it's interesting. But okay. what a, yeah. Thank you. Thank you uh, for inviting me to share my... Uh, and thanks for coming. <laughs> to share my thoughts and pondering about um, urban projects and interactive projects, and especially about the, um, the criticality, what I call criticality in them, or the critical ambition. Um, I'm, I'm a theorist. I'm academic, and uh, as I said uh, in the break, I'm a little bit intimidated to speak uh, to some of the people whose work I write about, because um, my, I write about screens and media after the fact. And it's from a historical perspective, however recent the works are. My interest in urban media comes largely from a theoretical um, uh, perspective. And as I said, uh, so that this implies a historical and comparative approach. And also a disclaimer, I will be the one today who's going to read from a written paper. I'm sorry for that. But my, the point I want to make is... Um, yeah, it's theoretically maybe a bit dense, and in order to um, keep coherence in what I say and keep time, I uh, prefer to write it out and, and read it to you. So apologies for that static presentation. Uh, so roughly, I'm interested in two things. On the one hand, um, in the cultural design, or what you can call cultural design, of media technologies and practices, including their cultural, social, political implications. And on the other hand, the way in which we understand these practices. In short, what we do and what that means to us. In my research on mobility and navigation, indeed, I am as much interested in the way mobility shapes our visual practices as in the way that we act and experience and think with mobility. This thinking with is what underlies creativity and experimentation. To be precise, in design, we, f we find this thinking with at the intersection of technology and practice. As such, navigation and mobility entails more than the portability of devices, the principles of ubiquitous computing, or the temporality embedded in what we can call performative digital cartography. Mobility and navigation are cultural in the sense that they do not only bring forward process as a um, cultural form and emphasize the experiential and performative, but also philosophical in nature. Um, they imply a philosophical nature of the being in the world in that they shape our thinking in and as process. So within this context, I'm fascinated by figures that function as tropes or figures, uh, or spatiotemporal uh, visualizations that bring together a metaphoric and systemic logic of using and thinking media. For example, after exploring a kaleidoscopic model for an archaeological approach to emerging media practices, and the navigational tro as trope of mobility in visual culture, uh, in the visual culture of the moving image. In my current project, I'm interested in the logic of layers and layering that we can recognize in our use uh, of and thinking about media, uh, but media technologies as cultural interfaces, interfaces that bring us tools to reflect on and engage with culture. So in this sense, I explore the performativity of interface technologies that occurs uh, in the reciprocity of creativity and reflexivity. And this reciproc reciprocity is what is at stake in my talk. How does design work with what we can do with technologies? 
And how does this become a thematic in itself? How does design work with and by this also reflect on these affordances? So there's a reciprocity there. It is the critical implication of questioning by doing in design that I wish to address. We use critical often, but what do we mean by it? What do, how does it operate? In the case of performative, interactive, participatory, urban media interventions, to use the whole lineup of adjectives, uh, it is perhaps productive to approach this as an embedded and embodied criticality. I'm sorry, I'm a person of words more than of images, maybe. Um, so criticality in Irid Rogov's terminology refers to a performative function of critique which is experienced in encounter, which takes place, it takes place in the present. At the interface, it is there outside of the regime of representation and in the realm of performativity that active and critical participants are produced, according to Rogoff. Indeed, interactive media design often explicitly addresses the connection between thinking and doing. And I want to bring together the creative slash experimental and critical slash philosophical underpinnings of, of design, or perhaps you could say that's the social political ambition of design that bringing together the creative and the philosophical. This reflection brings forward the way in which design works with a layering of urban space, a layering that allows for a participatory and critical engagement with urban culture, and I will hopefully be, become a bit more explicit about what I mean with layering, and layering is much like critical, a floating term that we use a lot, but it's good to think about what does that mean? What do we mean? How does layering work in the making of meaning and giving of significance? My perspective today is to approach urban interfaces or location-specific projects as curatorial machines. They are designed as techno-social assemblages that practice curation. So, with practice curation, I mean that they under, are understood as process rather than as a product of curation. We tend to think of curation as the creation of a product, an exposition, an exhibition. But I want to look at the curation as a process, as something that is machinic, that is done. So to sum up my arguments, um, address in the following ideas. So urban interfaces are spatio-temporally designed arrangements or dispositives. And I will say a little bit more about the concept of dispositive. And these dispositives that bring together technology and the public in a scenography, an arrangement which is designed, thought of, a scenography of participatory presence. So it's the being present in active, in participation, in dialogue that is at stake. And as such, they can be considered as machines of cultural curation by establishing that participatory presence being designed out of a concept of that ambition. So this entails, I think, and this is a very important point, or at least I think it's very important, there is an inherent potential of criticality of course, the question is, and we can maybe discuss that, or I don't know, maybe after my talk or maybe in a, a different moment in the day, do we embrace that, this potential? How do we embrace that? How can we be critical of our own critical ambition? So there is an inherent criticality in interactive design. Oops, sorry. So central in my argument is the specificity of urban projects as dispositives that arrange and bind together the image, the interface, and the interfacing subject. This entails a perspective on the performativity of urban interfaces characterized by connectivity, participation, navigation, and brings to the fore the transformative and this inherently critical potential of urban interfaces. 
And this transformative potential is the locus of experience and meaning, and therefore cultural significance. And maybe this ties into what you found interesting, the cultural meaning, the cultural significance of design, why it is important. For the purpose of discussion and coherence, I propose to consider a central case study as our theoretical object, or object to think with. And we'll zoom in on one of the Connecting Cities projects that has inspired my work greatly, the installation Saving Face, which was already mentioned this morning by Katja, by artist Karen Ansal, who's present here, and Herman Matt. I will focus on this example to interrogate how urban projects can be understood as curatorial laboratories for embodied criticality. And I assume this is a familiar work to you, but please bear with me because I take it as an allegorical example of design and my discussion as an example of theoretical analysis. <laughs> uh, while departing from the specificities of this particular installation, my point is more general as my research encompasses a broad range of screen-based works, whether installed or mobile, and precisely because of their diversity a diversity inherent in artistic and innovative design. Um, it's what we want, diversity, of, of course. But obviously the analysis here is intended to invite and open up discussion and not to narrow down our, uh, our scope. As multi-screen, site-specific, social, and participatory ecosystem that works according to the dual principles of physical touch and what I have called elsewhere a haptic gestural looking the local setup of Saving Face comprises a large public urban screen and an application with facial recognition software, if I understand it correctly, for a smaller screen or a kiosk. The work invites participations or participants to touch and trace their faces and thereby paint uh, themselves on screen in front of, uh, of them and contribute their image to the database. The individual's face on the larger screen transforms into a composite image of the larger community of participants, past and present. While the interface itself is perhaps not mobile, strictly speaking, the work is very much about mobility in contemporary public space and network urban culture. It offers a context for reflecting on the movements of people and the circulation of data and images across platforms the urban context as a living and layered archive. And the activity and gestures elicited by a variety of screen-based cultural interfaces. Because of this characteristic of allowing the mobile subject in public space to engage with and participate in the process of um, the creation and dissemination of images, the work enables us to consider the specificities of current uses of mobile interactive and network media. It presents these as a process, an operation, a working with technology on the one hand and as a collaborative and public participatory engagement on the other. So as such, the work is what it does. Or if you prefer, it does what it is. Indeed, the word is reflexive. It proposes itself as embodied thought not only on interactive screen media, but also on a cultural understanding of physical material as well as networked connectivity. It experiments with its technological affordances in that it works to critically expose how these affordances operate in the act of working with them. At the same time, it experiments with ways of addressing the social, um, the social questions this potential of the affordances raises about presence, subjectivity and visibility within a connected and participatory framework. Thus it is performative and experimental in the true sense of making that which it analyzes at the same, at the same time. This performativity is the message, you could say in McLuhan's terms, or as I phrase it elsewhere, the medium is the method. Within a culture that so privileges uh, innovation, urban interfaces, to use that as a generic term for all kinds of, of interactive works, are much like laboratory, laboratories for experimentation. To borrow a term from science and technology studies, they explore and question their own possibilities. 
Well, we creatively invest in these projects and herald them as the new interfaces for civic engagement, playful learning, participatory culture, we also need to develop tools for analysis, comparison, and criticism. However, traditional evaluative criticism grapples with their, uh, their qualities that are also precisely their strength. Uh, and, sorry, their strength and also their inherent vulnerabilities, and I think Katja mentioned that also this morning. When it comes to concerns about meaning and sustainability, our thinking about innovative and experimental interfaces must take into account the fact that they are inherently short-lived, that they may enable but also require participation, and that they have a transformative potential that may or not be effectively deployed, so to speak. As an analyst of screen media, I've been seeking to develop concepts that may help us to approach the diversity and fugitivity of these projects and do justice to their presence even if they are short-lived and even if they are inherently dated quickly. To frame them in a conceptual, coherent conceptual universe um, in order to grasp their details, their comparative specificity, to assess their, assess their historicity, what is their place in history. As I mentioned, this positive, this positive, it's hard to ex translate in, or impossible in, in, in English. The French word dispositif is not uh, done justice by the usual translation of apparatus, so I'll stick to dispositif. The arrangement that encapsulates technology, subject, and image is particularly useful as a scalable heuristic device for the comparative analysis of visual arts and media or any systemic arrangement or composite spatially organized object. Museum exhibition is a very good example. So. It allows us to analyze and situate synchronically or diachronically, contemporary or historically, differences and similarities between media forms or other cultural formations. This concept has traveled a long way. Michel de Certeau, also already mentioned by, by, by Katja, offered a critique of Foucault's famous panoptic conception of dispositif as a formation for surveillance and control, as an architectural form that, is, that, that installs uh, surveillance and discipline and has inspired an approach to dispositif that opens up possibilities of contact, participation, and play. And I think that's particularly in inspiring for us um, when we look at works that um, are interactive, that take into account sensual and physical contact and um, those things. So this reconsideration of dispositif as a network arrangement that allows for various forms of agency and performativity and experience is particularly useful for a pragmatic analytical approach and critical as a tool for critical analysis to interactive and locative interfaces. Media dispositives can thus be understood as the arrangements that establish relations and processes between and organize spatial and temporal settings of techno-social practices which produce subjects and shared meanings, which produce culture. I take location-based projects as installation dispositives that comprom comprise a layered interface. And layeredness here I understand as a spatial-temporal relation designed in and organized by the interface. My notion of layering is meant to be productive for the analysis of hybrid compositions of interfaces and something that we are dealing with on, um, well, I was going to say on a day-to-day basis, but yeah, maybe that's true. Of images, spatial constructions, and navigation, and we tend to use layering a lot for that purpose to sort of understand how things are yeah, diffusely connected in different ways. The concept of the curatorial puts a specific spin on that concept of dispositive, one that begs for analysis of this layering and enables us to analytically tease out the relationship established by the installation and the larger urban dispositive 
the urban situation that encapsulates the work and that the work reflects on. This positive of, or any kind of spatiotemporal, spectorial, and participatory arrangement entails a form of curatorial design. The curatorial is here understood as a broader conceptual framework for the design and programming within cultural spaces, whether virtual, social, geographical, or conceptual, rather than the more narrow sense of curation in the professional, as the professional practice of designing museum exhibitions uh, would evoke. It constructs a, a reflexive positioning of elements, and that's an important point. It constitutes it in its operation in the vein of curatorial machines that I addressed earlier, and is embodied in the experience of the possibilities of contact and playful participatory engagement. It's in the working with and engaging with these machines that we experience the curatorial as something embedded in the design, which is not finished until we work with it. It is the coming together of thought and experience that is at stake in curatorial design, an embedded and embodied criticality below the surface. For our understanding of the curatorials derived from curation used for museums and other exhibition practices, we may bring together the English to expose, which includes the meaning of laying bare, uh, with the French verb exposé, to display as well as to argue. It is a specific combination of analysis and argument, or the analytical and the rhetorical, that we can recognize as the main principles of the curatorial across disciplines and in different cultural contexts. Indeed, within our mediatized culture, we speak more and more of curatorial practices outside of institutional walls. The city has been conceptualized as urban curatorial space, for example. And the authors of the uh, 2012 MIT collection, Digital Humanities, define curation in analytical and rhetorical terms in the context of digital network culture as the selection and organization of materials in an interpretive framework, argument, or exhibit. Whatever the medium, the platform, or institutional context, curation can be seen as the care for constellation, the constellation of elements, the selection and organization, and their interpretive framework. Indeed, as the authors continue, rather than being viewed as autonomous or self-evident artifacts, uh, self-evident artifacts can be seen as being shaped and by and shaping complex networks of influence of production, dissemination, and reception animated by multi-layered, here it comes again, debates <laughs> and historical forces. To curate, then, is to filter, organize, craft, and ultimately care for a story composed out of, even rescued from, the infinite, infinite array of potential tales, relics, voices. Or in a concise summary by Mark James Leger, curation is a practice that creates a space for discourse and critique, a space-making, discursive and critical endeavor. When we speak of interactive and network installations or systems, this discursive and framing aspect of curation is the result of the design of creative engagement of the public with the artifact artifact in interaction. And this is something that is not my experience as designer, but of course I'm distilling that from, from looking at the finished product of design. So I'm so bold as to state that that is the ambition, but you may contradict me. Interestingly, a similarity with media has inspired work some museums and exhibition practices as well. For example, Kosman and others have systematically have a symmetrically opposite perspective and argue for an understanding of museum exhibitions as media in the McLuhan sense, including their essential transforming potential. The authors point out how the open associative nature of the format fits the cultural moment. They consider the exhibition as an interface with a critical function. Uh, directing the view and transforming the messages into a manifest interpretation. This sounds very directional, top-down, giving meaning to the elements. For my interest in interactive mobile location-based me uh, media, the analogy with exhibitions of spatial media through a concept of interface 
is inspiring for the development of a critical approach to these practices. Moreover, in this comparison, I would include audio tours and GPS-based apps and augmented reality for mobile screens, precisely because exhibitions are also inherently mobile. The tour or cartographic grid, then, is only a geographically wider net to capture what is at stake in, what is at stake in exhibition or scenography, if you will. And I'm interested in hearing uh, augmented reality designers if they would agree with that analogy. A necessary step uh, in, our, uh, in this comparison of curation and museum exhibitions, uh, the curation of museum exhibitions on the one hand and media projects uh, on the other is, is, uh, is to discern the distinction between curation by the project, the curatorial that I, were, uh, that I um, uh, addressed, and the institutionally embedded of curating these projects as you know, integrating them in a collection. The latter issue has gotten some attention in recent publications. Um, the first, not so much. Taking the curatorial as heuristic concept, uh, we can move away from the technical principles of exhibition and a look, a focus in our analysis of the underlying logic within dispositives of interfaces, urban interfaces, interactive works, uh, urban media projects. So let me sketch two sets of aspects that we can develop in the analysis of curation. The earlier coupled analytical and rhetorical aspect of curatorial design, curatorial vision in design, and the overarching mission or care and critical pretension, criticality, inherent in what we can call cultural curation by interactive design. So I do this by looking at the way saving face is our central example uh, in a reflexive gesture demonstrates questions and as such critiques this, these aspects to my view. As a laboratory for experimentation, this works thematized the way it, its design establishes new connections, allows for forms of interaction and encourages forms of haptic and participatory engagement. It asks for a critical analytical perspective on its status to understand the project as a work of design that makes statements about its own self-questioning potential that stems from the reciprocity of analysis and argument. And in the break, I said to Karen that I think that this is very fundamentally philosophical about the work. It explicitly addresses three aspects of the layered and location-based interface that are brought together within a dispositive of urban interfaces. The participatory agency of the individual and the act of interfacing, the installation as public event that is watched by bystanders, and the questioning of the traceability of the image in the composite network collection of database, which is more sort of an online connectivity that's set up. And uh, apologies for the very clumsy way of drawing that. The flow is sort of connecting it to other previous installments of the installation. It's really silly, but trying to complicate things. Significant about saving face is the centrality of the face in this layering, and I'm really happy with the big projection of the face here. Um, as a central image on the urban screen in the intimacy of the participant's gesture of stroking her own face uh, by the participant in order to conjure up the screen image as a network composition, a collage of different faces of earlier participants. <coughs> The title of the work with the double entendre of recording one's own face and not losing face in public, in front of a facing public, brings to the fore the question of individuality and public identity. The face, as quintessential communicative element in interaction, provokes us to probe the notion of interface as central to curatorial design. The interface of the installation works with the principles of touch and haptic and material form of looking as gesture of making, saving and tracing the image, and as such seems to comment on several issues at stake in my argument. As an artwork, it puts technology and connectivity between the hand and the screen and the archive or database or network center stage. It's an interface par excellence and literalized 
par excellence and literalized by visualizing the way it functions its technological arrangement and the touch of the user that activates its um, operation. On the one hand, the artwork reminds its participants that they are being seen, that to be in urban public space means to be visible. On the other hand, it endeavors to intervene in how visibility operates, how visibility the public face signifies. The gesture of touching one's own face in order to visualize oneself in relation to others points to the processual character of navigational gesture in the context of location-aware technologies. In this way, it harkens back to a long history in which photography or art and policing or governance are mutually informing. As indicated here, Saving face counters the abstraction we frequently encounter in public spaces. It gives significance to an activity, navigation and its gesture, that is routine every day and presumably inconsequential. By returning the face to interface, the project raises questions about presence, subjectivity, visibility, and the anonymity often attributed to being in public. The work is highly personal, yet simultaneously public and collective. It negotiates the private intimacy of auto-touch, a gestural selfie, and a highly public and collaborative, yet very temporary, visibility on screen. The collage of different faces displayed on screen is a tracing, as well as a tracking, of multiple actions by multiple participants, accumulating and metamorphosing across multiple moments. A composite image that speaks symbolically to the multiplicity and mutability of subjectivity and to the temporal layering of various individual presences. The processuality of the navigational gesture does, does leave a trace, albeit an untraceable one. An iconic image of individual faces fractured and reassembled in, new, in a new hole, it says, we were here rather than this is who we are. The image testifies to past gestures, the image evolution inviting ver further interaction and gesturing. And at the same time, each live update of the visualization keeps record or tracks the to-be-future traces. The installation bears witness to and renders visible the processual layering that is the semiotic process of the navigational gesture, a trace of the act of tracing. The way in which the urban public context is a layer in the design that requires curating becomes clear when we consider the way this installation, so characteristic of locative media, travels. Its location specificity is one that is paradoxically flexible. Elsewhere, I've spoken about ambulant locatedness of mobile media. Here, migrating locatedness may be more appropriate indeed each location-specific installation entails curatorial design, not as every public space is not the same. While both urban, uh, a well-known square in Amsterdam, or on the streets of, uh, at a festival, the work functions very differently from, say, within the walls of a museum. For example, in a, very, in a different version of Saving Face, uh, named Master Touch. Um, it was set up in the uh, then newly opened uh, Rijksmuseum for the special occasion of the museum night, night last year. There, the images of participants merge with faces of paintings. The similarity between the two installations allows us to consider what makes them different. If we depart from an analysis of dispositif, the comparison between both works hinges, I would say, very much on the level of the location specificity of the spatial context and on the level of its network connectivity, in the second case comprising of a data set of images from the museum collection rather than other participants, if that's right, Karen. Yeah, yeah. The description the artists give, very interesting for me to, to look at the way artists speak about their, their own work. They, it highlights some interesting different keywords. Master touch is an engaging and innovative way to open up data from the digital museum collection for an audience. 
This mission sounds a bit different from the earlier cited descriptor of saving face. In a visual, poetic way, uh, saving face shows, us, uh, shows our emotional and social encounter with trust, visibility, privacy in our smart cities. So it's interesting to see them. I don't have time now, and I'm already, I'm afraid, going on. So sort of okay, I think, with time. Anyway, uh, to, to further go into the specificity of these differences in vision and mission, nor the theoretical question about whether or and how to consider these as different installations or different installments of the same installation. I like to think about those things. But the juxtaposition of their similarities and differences hopefully demonstrates my point about the levels of the curatorial design of layered interfaces of networked and locative dispositives. The design of the interface can be understood as a form of curation at work, as it makes visible the layers of curation as process. It reflects on the layering of the cultural dispositive that comprises the in situ installation, the local urban and public context, and the blue circle, the spatial temporal interlocal network it is embedded in. Curation on this level entails the design of the possible interaction with technology to generate images, to contribute them to a collection, to create compositions, to disseminate for engaging local publics. It is a curation of curation, so to speak, an embodied self-reflexivity. By working with these principles, the installation demonstrates its principles. And this opens up to the critical potential inherent in the curatorial when it reflects on its own curatorial operation. Let's remind ourselves that curation comes from the word to care. This may sound a bit soft and even moralistic, but in fact, care is indispensable in, indispensable in all times and places to, alive, to allow life to be sustained, in, in, including the life of social, social ensembles that we call cultures. But care is necessary in many respects, not just in the sense of sustainability. The need to care for objects includes what is usually called conservation in the context of collections, but also the quality of their presentation. It includes the interrelations among objects and the enhanced meanings that may generate in their dialogue. So there is also a task for care. Moreover, care is needed for the object, object's dialogue with the public, including but not limited to physical interactivity. All this, this may seem to suggest that we must hold the object's hand in an effective relationship, but rather than a slightly top-down chaperone model, curation can also be thought of as the design of a laboratory. Then it's not so much in relation to this more nostalgic notion of care and conservation, but rather as care for the arrangements of possibilities, experimentation and participation. So let me conclude with some thoughts about the implications of the model of curating as an analytical framing concept and frame the features, potential, and consequences for a broader notion of cultural curating. Through the notion of curating, I have addressed a proposal made by the conveners of today's symposium to reflect on urban media with the question about what we may take as the consequences of performativity, or that's the way I understood the invitation, as central to dispositives or net, or net, of network location-based interactive media projects. The question of care and criticality in design is what um, my response is. My response is a question, therefore. <laughs> Sorry. Care at the heart and etymology of curating demands an answer to the question in what way can we embrace and make use of the transformative potential of technology and design? We can see this care practice in self-reflexive installations such as saving face that enable a risky embodied criticality. There the central and intimate act of stroking one's face becomes a participatory act. 
This gesture is literally as well as figuratively careful. The visibility of the subject being on a public screen adding to the community underscores the personal and hence responsible nature of the act of participating. Responsible, but also risky, because self-reflexive, and that makes us vulnerable as well. Once one becomes visually part of the image, adding one's face to the otherwise anonymous image. Network culture and fast-paced technological innovation demands reflection on the principles and the philosophy of design um, and of cu uh, cultural curating. Platforms outside of institutional walls provide new curatorial spaces and technologies offer new to tools and toys uh, for public interventions. Moreover, curation in and off urban space necessarily involves multiple layers in a complex spatiotemporal design of the dispositive of the location-based project, of the urban dispositive, as well as the more distributed, interlocal, connected and network dispositive of, for example, um, connecting cities. Indeed, in general, transformation and change require and enable fundamentally critical stance, not a critique outside of the work, but an embedded and embodied criticality from within. Changing technologies for changing cities asks us, ask us to reflect on conditions for this embodied criticality. We can find this in the design for participatory engagement and interaction with technology that allows for an experience of the processes of its own framing as a poetic act, in the act, so to speak. A saving face exemplifies it is in touch with the work that we participate in its examination in relation to us by tracing its criticality below the surface. That was it. So, thank you, Nana. Um, are there any questions? Yes. Thank you very much for your presentation. Um, my question is rather an open one. So, how the task of uh, preserving digital interaction influences your approach to curating? the task of present, preserving oh, sorry, uh, digital interaction or, if, if you wish, um, the, the work. Now, how does this task uh, influence your approach to curating? Because, um, like, from my um, point of view as an artist, you know, the, the task of um, uh, recording and preserving the interaction itself um, it actually influences the development and the production of the work itself. And I, uh, I would assume that uh, it would also influence the, the work of the curator. Uh, yeah, well, well, that's the thing. I'm, I'm really not speaking about the role of the curator, but more of that aspect in the design that is curatorial. So it exemplifies, as if I understand your um, yeah, sort of uh, theoretical example uh, correctly, it's if the design entails the recording, which much like saving face, it's the recording <coughs> of the event of participation that becomes part of the work. So it's included in the design. So. Yeah, curation in that sense is it's it includes the um, the making the recording and making use of that recording, sort of activating its own tracing. I think for me theoretically, that's very much the point of a work such as Saving Face. For me, it's very much about tracing and traceability and uh, anonymity of that, and that's what we read also in the descriptors of the, of the artist, but. Um, I think conservation and the question and the impossibility of it is very much also an element of the cur curatorial stance that a work can have or that you 
take into account in designing it, I would say. Yeah, I'm curious to hear from people that actually design stuff <laughs> if that is something that they think about or work with. It, uh, again, as I opened with, I look at it after the fact and I sort of distill principles that I recognize in works that to me, well, that's my perspective, that's what I find interesting, that resonate with certain cultural tropes or things that I see reflected elsewhere as well, sort of sign of the times. With a distance, I look at it, even though it's all new and innovative. I'm kind of like taking a few steps back and so looking at what I think I see as yeah, thank you. Anyone else? Not even the artist who did the uh, Saving Faces? <laughs> <laughs> that would be interesting. <laughs> For me, this is very inspirational because you, you, you're describing uh, the practice of the laboratory of the, as a form of interaction, as a form of participation. You, you're bringing all these terms very, very nice together and um, as a form of engagement. And then the, the curational, um, something which is also important in the work is the, the role of the host. As an artist, uh, me or my partner Herman, or we are always ho hosting the work um, to make sure that if people come up and start participating, often uh, people think that once they have to touch their body, they think they are a set of buttons because it's interactive. So they start to do this. <laughs> Should I do like this? And then we say no. Um, it's that <laughs> no we, we go further we say uh, touch your face like it's your lover's face and then people often start to giggle and then they start like like this <laughs> and then then the whole set situation changes so talking about hosting and cure and curational this is this is part of the form of tracing and this is actually then what is um, saved in the database the the, the caressing of the face. Yeah. 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 But that's an interesting thing. Uh, for me, theoretically, I, again, sorry, that's no. what I do, yeah. but uh, the, the hosting, the being present and sort of guiding, and yes. hosting is, of course, a very nice term, and guiding is more, sounds a bit more restrictive, but um, that role in the present of being there, that's an interesting thing that I had not thought about in my analysis of the work, but could actually open up something like uh, comparing it to the tour guide principle or the guiding principle that you can sometimes, I mean, you guys do it literally being there and, and you know, engaging physically with the people, but of course there are other ways to, to, to have that um, with tours, the sort of guiding guide principles or something. Yeah. Interesting yeah. element, yeah. 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 Although, although, of course, if you add the host, it's another figure. Exactly. It's, it's another element in the dispositive that's part of this arrangement. And, of course, it, may, it, it sounds maybe a bit silly to, to be so technical about it. But I think it's interesting to see how this works like this. Again, taking this as an example, um, that's precisely what I mean with layered. It's, it's the, 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 the different spatial entities that are connected and that are intersecting and working together. So, I and find then, that. And then you shift, in my perspective, the idea of the house to the, the curatorial. 
yeah. Yeah. which is very nice to think about yeah. because the the host is more kind of form is more a word that comes from a talk show host uh, or comes from hosting a, a restaurant or a, or a party something like that whereas always the host has two two faces the one who invites and the one who enjoys who's yeah. responsible and the one who is uh, enjoying the situation whereas the curatorial is really the one who is how would you describe this curatorial what is if i would if i would ask you what is a curatorial role how would you describe that yeah well it, it kind of depends like uh, I, i try to to make a distinction between the curatorial as a principle that yeah. you can even attribute to something that i i sort of say it's a machine you know yes. it has components it has people in it yeah. but it's kind of a system that works system. and system. and and, yeah. and that creates something that is designed from a f vision and from a vi vision arranging elements together to create meaning is what i see as an essence of curating yeah. of course in professional contexts in museums Curation also includes having to do research, taking care of the materiality of the object and all kinds of other things. So it's not just this design. So I'm zooming in, if you compare it to a cur curatorship, that, uh, that's maybe a broader definition. So I'm, I'm, I'm talking about the curatorial in design, the curatorial design, those principles. Yeah. And the same with criticism and criticality and critique, and maybe it was a bit fast in the, in the talk, but uh, I think it's important to distinguish uh, a criticism that we can have on works, like this is a good or a bad work for these and these reasons, and critiquing it by laying bare its principles and see how it works and the things that may be hidden to us, the logics below the surface, And a crit the criticality that, I mean, that's what we speak about a lot when we say critical works, right? So it's the work that itself that offers critique, offers a way to think about things, mm -hmm. raises questions, mm -hmm. articulates mm -hmm. things that might be bothering us mm -hmm. about current culture, or whatever. Mm -hmm. So to give that a name, mm -hmm. I think it's useful to think cri about a critical disposition but yeah. yeah and then and then there's one last thing yeah now no, you must uh, um, to say something uh, difficult to stop the 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 hosting is uh, always a way to invite people and be vulnerable because people will in public space not be vulnerable like that It, you need protection you need to feel protected to be vulnerable yeah. And uh, the caressing is a vulnerable and intimate act in public space. And it becomes staged because uh, in the public space, other people are watching it. Um, so I'm, um, I'm curious about how you would, it, it, I think the curational role is one you do as a designer. Um, you, you, uh, you think about it, you design it. Um, um, Uh, before, before, before uh, yeah. yeah, and then the host is is taking it as a, as a yeah, sorry, <laughs> as a uh, curational role, as a curational designer, as practice during the performance. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, and that's why I, I like the. Uh, I think you call it yourself. You you guys call it a performance installation, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So the, the the performance is like emphasizing that it takes place, that maybe indeed that there are roles assigned uh, in the presence of the, that it's a kind of a stage as well, sort of. Yeah. yeah. Anyone else? Yes? Sure, no problem. <laughs> oh, yeah, me too. <laughs> Yeah, that was an interesting dialogue. <laughs> the two works um, at the museum and outside, so it's um, master touch and saving because it's quite different. Uh, it's the same. Um, uh, this this uh, blending uh, or merging uh, portraits, painted portraits with... Uh, Uh, visitors, mm -hmm. so, but it's quite different. 
Yeah, it's different. <laughs> yeah. um, in fact, we, uh, we uh, saving face is meant for the public space. Uh, the way you took this quote, like uh, it's an emotional encounter, and you uh, you mix your face with another face, so your identity becomes mixed. So you, it's um, it's a social act, and. Uh, Master Touch, which is in the museum, was really invited for a very specific, specific situation, which I totally loved too, but it's different. Um, it is the situation that the Rijksmuseum in Amsterdam has a beautiful uh, painting, portrait collection with Van Gogh and Rembrandt and all these great paintings, and they have digitized their collection, high quality, so everybody looks at uh, paintings at home and then goes to the museum and goes to the painting stand next to it, makes a picture, makes a selfie with the painting, say, I was here. But the whole relation with the painting as a res reflexive moment um, yeah, becomes less, becomes less frequent. And so the museum, uh, the, uh, uh, Shiloh uh, Phillips asked us, can you think of something that, uh, can, you, can, can we work with saving face in a way and we were in, in a more haptic way and can we, and so we uh, looked at theories of Laura Hugh Marx, and she was describing about the uh, uh, optical and haptical visualization, which is an optical is more like defining a, a, an image on a distance and controlling way of looking, as we do on screens. And whereas the haptical uh, op visualization is more about dwelling, about not defining a, an, uh, an image, about the not uh, an, an ever going journey through the image. Um, scanning, if it was not such a technical word, you would say scanning. And we combined it in the installation and where you have the, the picture on the screen and the dwelling rather here. So we brought literally the haptic to the face and, and um, People could then merge their face with the painting of Van Gogh of the portrait van Rembrandt. And we had postcards next to the, if in the installation, where we asked questions, um, if people would be ready. They, they, we asked them questions like, is, are you making this portrait or is the machine making a portrait? Mm -hmm. And what is the difference between looking at a painting and looking through touching? And then the audience would, would uh, uh, answer oh, all these questions. So it's ask a different so, work. Yeah. When you asked those questions, was it because you wanted to trigger people to think about their answers? Or is it also that you wanted to collect what they wrote? Both, yeah, both. Because what did you do with what, what they wrote? Did you yeah, they both. It, it's a way of to ref for the audience to reflect, to make yeah. more precise what it was really about, and to connect... Yeah. Uh, the experiential through the reflective, mentally, mental reflective, yeah. and to give this to an audience. And for myself, I wanted to have this data. I wanted to yeah. know. <laughs> yeah, cool. Yeah, ah. yeah so we yeah, have this whole pile with, uh, with answers, which is great. Yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> give them to me. I yeah, yeah, look yeah. at them. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but it's funny that, that Shiloh was uh, Shiloh Phillips from yes. the Rijksmuseum, is yeah. listed as the curator, which is maybe an example of the difference that I, I, I mean, the curation of the yes. work in the yeah. work designed by the designer. Yeah. And in this case, this institutionally Within the institution, curator, right. yeah. who is in fact, in this case, someone who invited you, or yeah. wh what was yeah. her role as a curator yeah. with this? Uh, inviting and, and sharing, sharing interests, sharing fascinations, yeah. So we, we talked about this, how, how could this yeah, yeah, work? Yeah, yeah. We talked about Laura and Marx, yeah, how, can we, yeah. how can we optimize this? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. No, but that, that's a, for another moment, but it's also interesting. Yes. Even though you make a distinction between those notions of curation, what yes. happens when they come together, when uh, interactive yeah. works are being added to collections, are being preserved, are being taken yeah. by the institutions that yeah. are now with the locative urban projects are stepping away from. Yeah. So, yeah, how, how do they, re is there a way to reintegrate them, or, I don't know. Yeah. Or do we even want that? Or, okay. or maybe not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah.
<laughs> But uh, I have uh, um, on the internet there's uh, there's a movie about Master Touch, so you can can see that I have a I can give the URL. Thank you. So we'll move on to the next yeah. speaker. So we'll take a short break, and you can continue the conversation because yeah. there's a lot of things to discuss, obviously. Uh, so a short break, and then we'll move on to Martin.